Our next speaker is um, uh, Aisha Zong. The painted, painted in blue and decorated with stars. 
The zodiac signs are rhythmically displayed around the prayer hall at the top of the pilasters. Among others, more typically depicted signs of zodiac, Budesh, Cancer, represented as a beetle, Scorpio, represented as a crayfish, and Taurus, represented as a toad. Uh, the synagogue in Turkish KDZ deserves special attention because it is the only non-functioning synagogue on the territory of contemporary Ukraine with an authentic Aral Kodesh, which boasts another well-preserved polychronic decor. It is decorated with flower motifs, the inscription in Hebrew whenever the axe set out, surmounted by two beds, originated perhaps in the biblical image of two pilgrims that overshadowed up by their wings. Symbols of 12 tribes of Israel are depicted on the frieze on both sides of Aron Kodesh by using uh, 14 images. As Dr. Dimit Levin rightly noted, it can be explained by the consideration that the tribe of Yosef is represented by his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and Ruben is represented twice, thus expanding the number of images to 14. Prayer Hall and Women's Galleries, the gallery of Czechish Kesinovo, contains more surviving fragments of wall paintings, even figures on both sides of our Kodesh columns, flowers, the stars of David, and inscriptions in Hebrew. Fragments of authentic wall paintings have been discovered in the interiors of Greek synagogues in the Vitus, Kupish, Kishvechna, Calvaria, and Vilnius, the new Greek synagogues including wooden, wooden synagogues in Jajmari and Jemachi monasteries. Some of them were documented in the book Synagogues in Lithuania, prepared by researchers of Center for Jewish Art at the University of Jerusalem and Vilnius Academy of Arts in 2010-2012. Others were discovered later during the polychronic researchers of the former synagogues in Jerios, as for example paintings in Kupishki synagogue, which were found in 2015, by the researcher Vikolta Sraiva. In most cases, discovered fragments of interior paintings are very scarce. Yes. Nonetheless, even these authentic elements of paintings are very valuable as they allow us to imagine the colors which were used to decorate the interior of synagogue that then. In this context, the context, speaking about the sources important for the reconstruction of the colors, it's worth mentioning a unique artifact stock at Chauleo Schloss Museum, which is a fragment of wooden artifacts <coughs> from the demolished GPK synagogue. It can be attributed to the authentic visual sources, which help not only researching the traditions of an artistic imagery and symbolic motifs used in decorating the synagogue's interiors, but also the traditions of color solutions. This fragment of the Aron Kodesh retained authentic colors of painted elements, which survived rather well. The missing piece can be easily reconstructed based on the surviving photograph of the same Aron Kodesh, which can be attributed to another group of the visual sources that, that is iconographic material. Due to the fact that just several authentic synagogues interiors in the fragments of rural paintings remain, Iconographic material concludes the majority of visual sources. Mostly it consists of the photographs and drawings of synagogues and their interior decorations made by photographers, Jewish art researchers, and participants of ethnographic expeditions in the early 20th century. Unfortunately, for the same reasons which were mentioned above, the Shah and the Soviet policy of destruction of Jewish traditions and culture, iconographic material is also not very numerous. In Soviet time, the surviving pieces of iconographic material were dispersed over different museums and archives of the Soviet Union. Uh, another part uh, was bought and brought by Cleaning Jews, where it was taught and systemized in archives and museums of various Jewish institutions. In Lithuania, iconographic material is preserved in various museums and archives, including Shulei Oshos Museum, National Chilonis Art Museum, the Vilna Gold State Jewish Museum, between and State Historical Archives and others. Very useful information can be obtained from photos of interiors of synagogues made by Shimon Zajic, Itzi, Serebrin, Katkelis Lemkenas, Romanowskas, Veikus and others. 
Iconographic material shows that painting technique together with a sculptural design was used to adorn around cottages and the walls on both sides of them, like in the synagogues of the region, Ness, which also wanted. In other cases, only the walls on both sides of the long cottage were decorated with paintings, like in the synagogues of Swiss Lodges, and Novalis. Most, most often, images of the Torah's clothes, musical instruments, reminiscence of biblical landscapes. In Jerusalem, the trees of Eden and lions were used for the purpose. The Tilas motif painted on both sides of the long cottage is also typical. <coughs> A good example of that is the interior of the Greek synagogue of Vilna, as documented in the photograph by Itzik Serenko. Sometimes painted elements in the long cottage decor were used very sparingly, like it has been done in the synagogue of Sukhavolo, where they add very little to the overall architectural sculptural purpose. Couple of type of long cottages used in the small in small synagogues were also decorated with painted elements comprising mainly vegetative motifs, which could, could be interpreted as allusion to Gun Eden or just as decorated elements, like for example in Kerchi Synagogue. The wooden or podish of Odelsk Synagogue deserves special attention. It was decorated with symbolic animalistic motifs, which could be associated with the images of Terek Shira, symbolizing righteous Christ and the Lord. In other synagogues, most of those with the wooden along codices that were luxuriously decorated with elaborate wood carvings, painted elements were located at the topmost level rather than at the bottom, that is above windows on the frieze on the wall and on the wall ceiling. Prominent examples of the kind were the synagogues in Gorno, Mariampole, Kedaini, Pogmois, and Kozhan Golotov. Sometimes Sometimes just detached painted symbolic motifs were used, as in the case of Valkyrie Synagogue, where an obscure image of Little House was painted on the vault ne next to the inscription announcing the names of the synagogue masters, Mordechai and Meyer Gershon. On the other hand, the abundant uh, painted uh, decorations also were used, as in the case of Mordechai Synagogue, where both the wall ceiling and the walls contained a lot of painted images and symbolic compositions. Iconographic material shows that mural paintings were also used to decorate the western wall of prayer walls and balcony <coughs> corners of women's galleries. The balcony corners used to be decorated by images of four metaphoric animals mentioned in the K award. Uh, the D and the eagle from this group could be seen in the photo of Goblin Synagogue. The photo of Popular Synagogue was decorated by the image of the D, eagle, lion, and camel, uh, maybe instead of the leopard or a separate image connected with some biblical Talmudical and Midrash quotation. Uh, images of town and sailing ship probably symbolizing Jerusalem and ships of Tarshish, which as it is written in Isaiah will bring Israel's sons to Jerusalem in Messianic times, also are documented as in the photo of Nesvish synagogue. Symbols of the tribes of Israel and images of musical instruments were also used to decorate women's galleries, as in the case of Ukmedi and Jagaira synagogues. Painted elements were also used to decorate wooden bimas, their domes and wall ceilings. Characteristic examples of that are the decoration bimas, decorated bimas in the synagogues of Grodno, Jurbakas and Sukhavola. Speaking of the second group, written sources, its multiple nature should be emphasized. Firstly, the written sources for interpretation of the symbolic meaning of painted images should be mentioned. I mean traditional Jewish texts mostly comprising a Gaelic literature which helps us to clarify or least ways to interpret the symbolic meaning of the image. However, as this issue merits separate discourse, in this paper I would like to confine by presenting another group of written sources which consists of the descriptive text of non-remaining interiors of Ukrainian Jewish synagogues and supplement the above mentioned visual sources in a narrative way. I mean the descriptions of synagogues interiors made in the early 20th century by participants of ethnographic expeditions, artists and travelers, uh, also 
Another important source is the memories of surviving, surviving Ukrainian Jews on their native towns published abroad after the World War, War II settled its fall. Valuable information about the Lithuanian synagogues could be found in the post papers on Jewish art, written by students of Professor Paulus Galone at Kaunas University in 1931-1936, and stored in the Chilonis National Museum of Art, the Galone family house in Kaunas. Assuming that this material could be not known to the wider audience as it is written in Lithuanian, I would like to dwell on it more further. Reference to the mural paintings uh, in the in the Lithuanian synagogues would be found in the papers of Martin Dindler, Claude Bergaiter, uh, Shevard Torreiter, Schumann Schreiter, Hauptmann, and a few other students whose names are not indicated in the papers. For example, Martin Dindler in his paper of 1933 gave, gave a brief of the situation with the research of painting decorations of synagogues in Lithuania of the time and shared valuable information about the war paintings of the Yankole, Yonava and Galvaria synagogues. Also, the exteriors of those synagogues are documented in the photos. Moreover, the Galvaria synagogue uh, building survived till nowadays. No iconographic material on the interior rural paintings is made. Thus, so far, Greenland's testimony is the only source telling us about the interior paintings, which include such motifs as images of Jerusalem, Leviathan, temple vessels, and symbols of tribe of Israel. No, no less important is the seminar paper written in 1934 by an unidentified student in which he described the interior paintings of a Greek D synagogue built in the 19th century, which has not survived and there is no iconographic material that contains any reference to it. Among the mural paintings of this novel, the student mentioned biblical images, tombs of Raquel and Abraham, quotations from Bible and flowers. Special attention must be paid on the seminar paper written by Dr. Wright in 1935, which gives an extremely detailed description of the wooden Kroni synagogue dating back to the beginning of the 18th century. Kolbergaite even indicated, indicated the name <coughs> of the artist who created the wall paintings, Johannan, and the year where the paintings were created, when the paintings were created, that is 1782. In my opinion, Kolbergaite provided a truly exhaustive, exhaustive testimony on the painted interior decor of the lost Yoni synagogue, and as it has indeed been published anywhere to now this, I would like to quote its translation into English, the beginning of the quotation. High up on the eastern wall, on the right side of our cottage, there is a wall painting of town depicted along flights of stairs, which leads to a high-rise palace with columns, little balconies and towers. The inscription next to the painting says, this is Jerusalem. There is a well at the bottom, next to it means a giant well with horns. The inscription next to the wall says, Shorha Bor. The second painting in the nearest vicinity of Aron Kodesh is the Tree of Life. It is depicted as a huge strong tree full of <coughs> wood which reminds of horns. On the left side of Aron Kodesh there is the Tree of Knowledge. It is just a big strong and full of fruit. There is a grass snake wrapping its body around the tree trunk and licking the fruit. A bit further on, on the same wall there is an image of a town with the high-rise buildings and towers and a sea down banner full of small ships. The whole painting is surmounted by the Leviathan, a giant sea monster. On the topmost level of the western wall, very close to the roof, there is a picture. There is an enwrapped torus frog lying on a carpet on both sides, gently supported by lions with huge heads, wearing eyes and open jaws. The attachment in, reads in Hebrew. It is a tree of life of those who take hold of it and those who support it are fetching it. The northern and the southern walls are supporting the ceiling, therefore, their only decoration is a long, narrowish cornice. Adorned with painted elements which include images of eastern and local animals and cattle. Many of the animals have a symbolic meaning. 
They represent the tribes of Israel. Running D is the symbol of the right-footed tribe of Dan. Lion is the symbol of the tribe of Judah, which was famous for its strength. Next to the lion, there is an inscription saying, strong as a lion. Further down, there is an eagle with an inscription light as a eagle. Next to it, there are peacefully grazing horses, running years and squirrels. The colors have, have faded. It is still visible that blue, white, black, green, and red colors prevail. The whole paintings are extremely vivid and naturalistic. The animals are depicted sitting, standing, or running. The end of quotation. So far, this paper by Goldberg Reiter is the only testimony providing an opportunity to visually enter the lost synagogue and to discover the impressive work of the wall paintings that adorned it. Unfortunately, exhaustive descriptions of the time are rather rare. Cases when such exhaustive descriptions are supported with surviving iconographic material of the interior of the same synagogue are even rarer. For example, the well-known description of Mogilov Synagogue made in 1916 by artist Lee Sitsky together with the fragments of the wall paintings copied by him and the artist Riva, first published in 1923 in the Magazine of the Review. This description along with the remnant iconographic material helps establish quite a full group of mural paintings which were done by Jewish master Chaim Ben Sadov in 1740. We could easily notice some similarities with the above noted description of the mural paintings of Priyana Sinova, especially the descriptions of such images as two towns, Eden trees, Torah scrolls, lions with huge heads and open jaws, ox leather pan, and a variety of other animals which are depicted, depicted in an extremely vivid manner, as they were characterized in both testimonies. Yet another rare example where a rather full description of a synagogue supplement the plentiful iconographic material on the same synagogue is the remnant documentation of the Bogroy Synagogue, which was performed in 1938 by initiative of Jewish Historical and Technographical Society in Konas, headed by its chairman Koroznitsky and Shauleo Shoz Museum, headed by its director Wade, together with linguist professor Hatskelis Lemkenis and regionologist Vashishkis. The written source that allows a more detailed reconstruction of the interior view of the Fokuro Synagogue is the description of synagogue made by Lemkenis during this documentation, first published in 1938 in the Confessus magazine. The description by Lemkenos together with the photographs of the synagogue interior made by himself and Stasis Veikus, which are stored in the Shuleo Shoz Museum, allows a reconstruction of its image. On the basis of such detailed description uh, and iconographic material, Dr. Sergei Kravtsov made virtual computer reconstruction of the Bogroy Synagogue in Center for Jewish Art at Hebrew University of Jerusalem in 2006. The fact that the very building of the synagogue, which is the oldest wooden synagogue in contemporary Lithuania, built in 1801, remains to this day, even though the interior was, was fully destroyed, is very important in the case of intentions to reconstruct, reconstruct its, its uh, interior view. So, at the end of my presentation, I would like to refer to the case of Pogloy Synagogue, which has been on restoration from the end of 2015. The interior, <coughs> the interior of Pogloy Synagogue was completely destroyed in 1954, when the synagogue, synagogue's building was adapted to accommodate the cinema. It was then uh, it was then that the women's gallery was pulled down, the wooden wall ceiling was removed, new eternal brick petition, petitions were erected, and interior walls uh, covered. As a result, the layout of the building was completely changed and the authentic decor was. At the beginning of 2016, during the restoration of the synagogue building, the petitions erected in 1950, 1954 and the patterns from the interior walls were removed, thus revealing two authentic wooden pillars.
pastors with capitals protruding from the northeastern and southwestern walls, which serves as a supporting structure for the women's gallery. On the walls, the surviving elements of authentic, authentic wallpapers were discovered. Uh, a piece of a wooden onyx decorated with the painted ornaments and repaired to iconographic material was also found. In the process of removing non-authentic non patterns from the interior wall, several authentic patterns with fragments of paintings were discovered. They survived because in the process of reconstruction of 1954, they were used to cover a hole in the wall of the synagogue. By comparing the surviving painted fragments and iconographic material, I suggest that the discovered patterns contain fragments of the painted images of the geese, as we can see here. Uh, also, another, it's the fragment of Leviathan, uh, and the, the Ark with the books. And all those images were among others that adorned the whole ceiling of the cinema. So, summarizing, it is important to note that the large amount of iconographic material, written sources, and authentic, authentic interior elements discovered during the restoration, which allow us to imagine colors of some paintings make the intentions to restore Oproy's interior and its rural paintings, or at least their fragments, ever more realistic. And it has been planned to complete the restoration of the synagogue by spring of 2017. So, let's get into it. Thank you. Um, that was so exciting seeing those last images of Procoius. Uh, some of us were there last fall. Um, it was a conference in Vilnius, and we visited just before the work was to begin. We see so many fragments that have come to view on the We're scheduled for the lunch, but I think we can take five or ten minutes for sure um, to have uh, questions and a discussion. And those of you who want to linger, um, that's good too. Uh, so these can be for all of our speakers, but let's uh, start uh, if there's something about Lithuania. That was also an extremely rich talk, uh, I think with uh, maybe uh, one third of the images from the archive because uh, we, we absorb all that rich iconography. Uh, so uh, overwhelming. Uh, Elisa, do you want to start with your question? Yeah, is the uh, Mariupol, is it the Karaj synagogue, as far as I remember? Mariupol? Yeah. Mm -hmm. is Mariupol is Jewish synagogue. Not Karaj? No. 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 Trakei. In Trakei. It's Karaj. Trakei. Okay. And do the Karaj have also more paintings? We could not get to the uh, other one. Exactly, I, 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 I was at the correct scenario. No, but maybe but we have a thing that is uh, uh, important. Yes, yes, that's the place of the Firkovic uh, family, uh, in, uh, not in, in Marianne, but in the other one that you mentioned. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. And uh, maybe we should uh, try and get in there, because we could. Okay, uh, I, I will try. <laughs> yes, and there are some other carides in the book we should look at mm -hmm. uh, to see if they have also. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I will remind you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question? Yes, please. Uh, Sorry, I don't know if I can get When we were working on this reconstruction, virtual reconstruction, Somehow couldn't bring together the testimony by Hatske de Slentine, where he mentions an elephant. We haven't seen elephants in Europe. Is it possible that, that the panel, those panels on the women's Mechitsa include actually an elephant? We just did not see it. Maybe, maybe we see just fragments in the panel while there was an elephant. I, I 
know that this uh, also what Lemkinas write about uh, elephant but didn't uh, write about camels. I don't know why. <laughs> Somewhere it was elephant also. It's a lot of information. I, I have a question, and actually it also refers to something that Boris was uh, showing this morning. Um, when he showed the example of uh, Wanzer in, in Poland with the two periods of paint uh, on, the, on the Bima, the uh, symbolic from the 18th century and the uh, narrative from the 1930s. Uh, obviously in Lithuania, and I think in all the countries we're looking at, uh, we often have this layering of two different periods of paint, and the descriptions don't usually distinguish, uh, so we can say, lines next to the Arona Kodesh, but the Arona Kodesh could be from uh, 1800, but the lines could be from 1920. Um, first, um, there's the technical uh, uh, challenge of dating these things, but second, I wonder if you or anyone else would care to address maybe what we can look forward to researching uh, to determine the changes in ideology and liturgy and art appreciation and uh, uh, understanding of Eretz Yisrael, all these things that create this new wave of painting at the end of the 19th and particularly the early 20th century. I open it to you, but anyone who can answer that. I think uh, that uh, uh, when we try to, uh, to, to explore the paintings of the Ukrainian region, it's uh, very difficult because uh, really we have very little sources. And uh, we can try to, to research uh, the time when it was painted and it's, the, the sources are very scarce. And Zodiac signs are still from six century. Yes, from yours, from yes your, your paintings are still... still um, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, for instance, the, uh, the um, uh, synagogue in Zolkia, Zhokov, uh, which we were talking about yesterday, we do have a number of photographs going back over several decades. And we see that from the late 19th century to the period just before the war, actually there were at least two programs of repainting. So even we can accuse the Poles or anyone else, uh, you know, the, or Jewish communities of being insensitive to their past and painting over to refresh their murals, but we can document that this was an earlier an earlier process and phenomenon. Uh, but what was the thinking behind it? What, I mean, was it just we want something new and pretty, or were there more fundamental um, uh, changes in uh, Jewish practice uh, that, that, that account for this? I was wondering if anyone had thoughts about that. Just, just a short thought about the, the, one of the latest layers in the joke. It is, it is interesting, it is known that the latest, latest murals were done by some theater artists and the community and the artists were blamed for doing that because as it had no relation to the tradition and so on, the art of painting in synagogue. And this is the one with the last, uh, the, the musical, it's the, the most contemporary musical instruments are right, like, right, right. maybe the saxophone or something there, something. That, that, <laughs> in, in, illustrating the 150th song. Yeah. <coughs> so the question, that gets back to our earlier discussion about traditional, what is traditional, and of course, as you say, we are not to judge, we, 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 we describe, we present, uh, but... Uh, uh, are there more questions? Yes. Page just to this discussion. It actually goes back to what you said before. Uh, what is the difference between high art and folk art? Because in folk art, uh, the audience is not so much interested in the art itself. It's in the service of the people who use the synagogue. They see something old, they don't appreciate it. They want their synagogue to be fine, looking nice, that everyone will come. Look what's happening today in Israel. I mean, we see hundreds or thousands of synagogues that all the time refurbishing their synagogues, 
don't pay attention to the past, throw away the furniture, and usually it's the last minute that you get there and photograph, only few, very few, I mean, that it would be aware of the, let's say, of the past and the importance of the past. So Falcal, I mean, Michelangelo, no one will touch and, uh, you know, that's forever. Well, but, uh, people complain in about Falcal, the people don't appreciate it, exactly. that's, the, that's the fact. That, that's a great definition to work with uh, between um, different high art, low art, throwing out those terms, but there is the uh, seeing synagogue art as something that's integral to the, uh, to, to the life, to the use and the understanding exactly. the, uh, the, 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 uh, of, of, of the practice of worship in the, in the synagogue itself. The synagogue is not a museum. And we've all had those stories, whether they are horror stories when we see something repainted, or whether we perhaps should accept them and step out of our shoes as art historians and appreciate the vitality of religion. I mean, that, that's, another, that's another discussion. The yeah. folk art is a non-appreciated art. The folk art is the art which is not appreciated yeah, by, no, its users, by its no, users. No, no. Folk art is in the service of people. And they don't see it as art to be admired. They see it. It should sell them in the synagogue. If it's not nice, if the style changes, let's say, what was good for my grandfather is not good for me, they will change it. They don't think it. So, again, I... This is still yeah, it's 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 supposed, I mean, I well, even this is supposed to be the on service of people and when uh, the popes are yeah. gathering ah. there. Let, let, <laughs> let me turn to Sergei again because, um, again, one of the, uh, a, a great example of this, what is professional, what is traditional, what is um, high, what is low, what is theater, what is synagogue, is the synagogue that you've documented and also what is original and what has been destroyed is at Sori Gidlan Synagogue in Lviv. So, so India is the best expert. India okay, is India is right here. So, so, so um, where is that? I, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's not Poland and it's, well, it's greater Poland, it's not Lithuania. But where, where would an example like that fall into our, 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 our discussion? How, you know, how Jewish is it? You know, is it how, is, is it in traditional motifs? I, uh, First of all, I would like just to turn your question to the statement, to, to the very important statement. Uh, it clearly uh, reflects the changes in the community, in the approach to the synagogue, not only to the liturgy, but for the social function of the synagogue. And this is was just the case in, in the world, in the new uh, repentant synagogue. For us, it was uh, really disaster that we lost uh, uh, those paintings. They were documented. But for the community, it was uh, an expression of their state of mind today. Mm -hmm. And this was along all the history of synagogue decoration. Uh, we, see, we will see, I think, uh, uh, today, later, uh, the uh, color arc from an Italian synagogue baroque arc with Rococo additions. Why? The reason is the same. So it's an uh, endendino development uh, that is uh, uh, part of this uh, intrinsic part of, of synagogue art. And I think uh, what is the traditional uh, in this tradition is flexibility and development. Uh, Another great definition to work with. We we have a lot of things. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, in the back. Um, another way to look. When we look at synagogues just here now, we, we see um, the, the paint over. Where we see original and, and then paint over. We have a lot of uh, synagogues where we see no paint over. We see just old, uh, and they didn't um, uh, take part in uh, new uh, restorations. I'm particularly thinking about Gavorshet's area. Yeah. We see plenty of them that were never painted over in any way, which theologically does tell us something about um, these other synagogues were developing perhaps ideas in certain directions and these other communities did not, or the art changed. I mean, there's, uh, there's one that, that, that Judaism uh, develops new uh, forms, but then people worship in synagogues that they don't paint over and they preserve and keep older, older themes up on the walls. So you have the first question, have the last question, and then we'll break for lunch and we'll continue all of this. We have another day and a half. Uh, these and other topics will come forward. Okay.
want to ask a question whether the fact that the zodiac is in uh, Beit Alpha in Hamatveria is a tradition that started a tradition that came then to the 19th and 20th century. Can you say that it is a tradition? I would say it's a tradition whether we can say, I mean, we, we certainly have zodiacs in so many Jewish context over so many different okay. periods. How do you bridge the gap that you, do, that you have? You have a, a, an enormous gap. What do you do with it? Well, we have to fill in that gap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the job of the researchers. <laughs> All right, on that note, on that challenging note, um,